All right, guys, welcome to the Algebra 1 Regents Review Series. So I'm going to go over a few problems in each of these videos on the Algebra Regents. We're going to start with the most recent Regents exam as of the day this was recorded. So it's the January 2024 Algebra Regents. And I'm going to go over probably the first six problems or so. I will put the link to the Regents test in the chat so that if you haven't seen it yet, you can try to do it before you um, before you watch this and you get the answers, all right? So diving right into number one, we're just gonna go one at a time. Here we go, it says the graph below represents a dog walker's speed during his 30 minute walk around the neighborhood. So the first thing I like to do when I'm looking at any problem that has a graph is to analyze it before I even look at the questions. What does each axis represent? What are the intervals? Understand the information that you're being given because there's so many different questions that can arise depending on what information you have on the graph. So the graph gives us an x-axis that represents time. Time is going on in intervals of two minutes. And um, then it's showing us in relation to that time what the speed is of the dog walker. So that's our dependent variable. Our y-axis represents the speed in miles per hour. And that's going intervals of a half mile, right? So you see that each notch there is a half mile. All right, the question asks us which statement best describes what the dog walker was doing during the 12 to 18 minute interval. So an interval is just a space of time, right? So they want to know what's happening between the 12 to 18 minute interval. That's 12 to 18 on the X axis. We're talking about time in between 12 minutes and 18 minutes. So that means that I'm looking at the graph from 12 Let me get this a little darker from the 12 minute mark to the 18 minute mark. So on my graph, that is this piece right here, this line that I'm highlighting in blue right there. So they wanna know what's happening during that time. All right, well, let's look at the point um, where it starts. So that's gonna be 12, one and a half, right? This point right here, oops, sorry, can't see that. This first point where our interval begins is the point 12 comma one and a half. It's important to give meaning to the points in the graph. Understand what we're looking at. So just read it as, remember that it goes X, Y. So 12 is your X, one and a half is your Y. 12 is your minutes. So after 12 minutes, the dog walker is going one and a half miles an hour. That's the dog walker speed. So after 12 minutes, the dog walker is going one and a half miles an hour. Let's look at the last point of that interval, which is going to be 18 comma one and a half. So after 18 minutes, the dog walker is going one and a half miles per hour. So what are we noticing from the points and the information we've extract, extracted from those points? We're noticing that as time went on, what stayed the same was the speed that the dog walker was walking. It was one and a half miles per hour when he started or she started or they started. And then it was one and a half miles at the end of that interval as well. Okay. So what we've understood is that the speed has stayed constant. When we start looking at the answer choices, our answer is right there in number one. He was walking at a constant rate. Rate is the same thing as speed, right? So he's walking at a constant rate is the correct choice. We should still go through and prove the other ones wrong just to make sure. So he was increasing his speed. No, because if he was increasing his speed, then at the 18 minute mark, it would have been a number that is higher than one and a half. It was not. So that one is incorrect. Number three, he was decreasing his speed. It would have been a number lower than one and a half. It was not. He was standing still. This one is a little tricky and might catch some of you because if the Y axis represented distance, so where was this dog walker, then it might be, um, then you might have known that he was standing still because he hadn't moved. If he was in the same place, right? He hadn't moved. Uh, but that is incorrect based on the labels that we have for our Y axis, right? He was not standing still. He is moving at a speed of one and a half miles per hour. So even though it's the same speed, if you're moving at one and a half miles per hour, you are moving, right? So you're not standing still, whether it's a really slow move or really fast pace, you still are moving somewhere. Okay. That is number one. Number two is asking us about relations and functions. So given this relation, which is just a set of ordered pairs, zero, four, two, six, four, eight, and X seven, which value of X will make this relation a function? Obviously we have to know what the word function means. So a function is a relation in which every X value is assigned exactly one Y value. So no X value can repeat 
with a different y. So if none of my x values can repeat, let's look at the x values that we already have. We have 0, 2, and 4. And what we're saying is none of those can repeat with a different y value. You see that our y value 7 is different from the other ones that are here. So that means that my x value cannot be any of the same ones that are already up here. Because if it was, let's say, for example, it was 0. If this last one was 0, 7, this would make this not a function because that would mean I have the points 0, 4 and the point 0, 7. So I have the same x value of 0 with two different y values. And that makes it not a function. Okay. If you're a visual person, you like to see this on a graph, you can also plot that on a graph and see that it would not pass the vertical line test, right? So if you plotted 0, 4, and then you plotted 0, 7, and you drew a vertical line through that, you'd see that it hits it more than once. So not a function. So whatever way you look at it, not going to be a function if we let that x value repeat with one of the values that's already there. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate 0, 2, and 4, which means that 6 is my answer. So if this order pair here was 6, 7, this would be a function. The 0 doesn't repeat, the 2 doesn't repeat, the 4 doesn't repeat, and the 6 doesn't repeat. So I'm all good, right? Moving on to number 3. The Speedy Jet Ski Rental Company charges an insurance fee and an hourly rental rate. As soon as I see that word fee, because I know that a fee is a one-time cost, a constant number. It doesn't change based on anything else, right? It's not like the hourly rental rate, which is going to depend on the hours. A fee is my B. It is my Y intercept when I'm talking about linear functions because it's a constant number that does not change. I just add it one time, okay? They also charge an hourly rental rate. When I see that, I'm thinking slope or rate of change or M because something that changes by the hour, it changes per hour with each hour. Those are rates of change. So that's my slope that they're talking about there. The total cost is modeled by the function R of X equals 30 plus 40 X based on this model, which statements are true. One R of X represents a total cost. So let's see if that makes sense. Would you get the total cost? Let me erase and get this out of the way a little bit. So it says R of X equals 30 plus 40 X. Would you get the total cost? Could this be total cost? If you were to add $30 plus $40 for each hour, because the X represents the hours. Yes. That's how we find out our total cost, right? If we were renting something, we'd have to figure out how many hours we wanted it for multiply that by the hourly rate and then add that fee that doesn't change. So yes, the total cost is R of X or Y. Number two says X is the number of hours rented. Yes, that makes sense because our slope is our hourly rental rate, meaning that whatever the rate is, it's going to get multiplied by the number of hours because that's what it depends on. So X is indeed the hours that are rented. 40 is the insurance fee. So I'm going to bring this over here. 30 plus 40 X. If we said that X was the hours, and 40 is the rate. 40 is not the fee because a fee, remember, is a one time thing. It's a constant. It does not get multiplied by anything, right? It's like a shipping fee. If you buy a bunch of things, the shipping fee may still just be that plus 995, plus 599, whatever it is, just that one time number, right? So the 40 is the rate. It is not the insurance fee. So three is out. 30 is the hourly rate. That's out as well because 30 is the number that is on its own. In this equation or expression the way I wrote it. So 30 is that fee. 30 is the insurance fee. 40 is the rate. So every hour I want to rent the jet ski, it's $40. Plus I have to pay that $30 no matter what for the insurance fee. So that means that we're looking at one and two being true. So two is the answer here. Moving on, we have a sequence here. The 11th term of the sequence is three negative six, 12, negative 24. All right. So analyze that sequence for a bit. And hopefully what you will realize is that we are getting the following number in the sequence by multiplying the previous one by negative two, right? Three times negative two would give me negative six, six times negative two would give me 12. So I found my pattern, right? So when it's this type of sequence, with a common ratio, the way that I'm going to find a sub n. So a sub n being the nth term of the sequence, right? 
is by first figuring out the first term. So I'm going to take that A1. So you see that sub N, just in case you guys don't know, just means the term in the sequence. So A sub one means the first term. A sub two would have meant the second term. All right. I'm going to multiply that first term by the common ratio. So whatever that number is that I have to keep multiplying by to get the next term. And I'm going to raise that. So I'm not going to, I'm going to multiply by the common ratio that is raised to the n minus one power, both of those n's representing the same number. So in this case, they want to know the 11th term. So I'm looking for the 11th term. So a sub 11 is what I'm looking for. A sub 11 is going to be equal to a sub one. So again, my first term, the first term in this sequence was three multiplied by the common ratio, which we said was negative two, right? The common number that you have to keep multiplying by is negative two to the n minus one. So n is the term we're looking for. We want, what is the nth term? For us, it's the 11th, but I'm doing 11 minus one. So it's to the 10th power, all right? Throw that in the calculator, just, or if you're doing it by hand, just make sure to follow order of operations. Exponents comes first. So it's negative two to the second power first, multiplied by three. And if we do that correctly, we're gonna get 3,072, making it answer choice three. All right. Moving on, which situation represents exponential growth? So exponential growth being different from linear growth. It's not something that's growing at a constant rate. Okay. It's growing at an exponential rate. So let's uh, go ahead and eliminate the other things that are growing at constant rates. Aiden adds $10 to a jar each week. That is a constant rate every week he's adding $10, right? So 10 is my rate of change. 10 is my slope. I know that after five weeks, he's added $50. I know that after seven weeks, he's added $70. There's that constant rate of change. So that's not exponential. That's linear. A pine tree grows 1.5 feet per year. That's another constant rate. I know that all I have to do is multiply the 1.5 by the number of years. And it tells me how much the tree grew. So another constant rate, not exponential. Ella earns $20 per hour babysitting constant. Again, every hour is $20. So 20 times, however many hours gets me her amount of money. So of course it must be number four, but let's read it anyway. The number of people majoring in computer science doubles every five years. That is not constant, right? If the first number I double, let's say there was two people and I double it. Now I get four, right? But after that, if I go to double the next number, I'm not doing times two again, right? So number four is an exponential growth. It's not going to be a constant rate. Number six, they want us to simplify this expression. So it includes combining some like terms, but before that, it includes distributing this minus sign out. So because this is asking us to subtract that whole parentheses, I can't just remove the parentheses because then it would just say that I'm subtracting four X squared, but it wants me to subtract everything inside that second parentheses from the first parentheses. So I have to first distribute out that negative one. So this is really going to turn into negative X squared plus three X minus seven. My first parentheses just comes down. Those I can take off because there's nothing in front of it. And now I have an invisible negative one here times negative, sorry, times four X squared. So it's going to be minus four X squared negative one times five X is minus five X and negative one times negative two is positive two. So I distributed that invisible negative one, which is just a minus sign to each of the terms inside of that second parentheses. Now I can start looking for like terms to combine. So remember you can only combine terms that have the same variable, same exponent. Once I find them, like negative X squared and negative four X squared, I can just combine their coefficients and then keep the variable and exponent. It's really important to look at the sign before the term. So this is negative X squared minus four X squared. So when I combine those, this is an invisible negative one. So negative one minus four is negative five. And I keep that X squared looking for more like terms. I see a positive three X and a minus five X. So three X minus five X three minus five is negative two and I keep that X. Now I see a constant term and that of course is going to be like terms with the other constant term. So I have negative seven plus two, which gives me negative five. And now let's look to see which one matches it. And here we are number two. All right. 
So that's the first two pages of the Regents. I will go over a couple of pages in each of these videos. If you didn't understand any of these or want to see more examples like one of these, just let me know.